Hello, this is Mohsen Razavi, and I'm going to tell you about our recent work on memory-assisted measurement device-independent QKD, or in other words, how we can put some bad memories into some good use. Well, we all know that quantum memories are essential to future quantum technologies such as quantum computers or long-distance quantum communications. The required and specification for such devices are, however, very demanding, and our technology is not yet there. That would raise the question that is, if, is it possible to do anything useful with existing imperfect quantum memories? And our benchmark for usefulness is to beat an existing no memory system. Our answer to this question is an optimistic yes. Our candidate to demonstrate this improvement is the so-called measurement device independent QKD. MBI QKD has been shown to be resilient to detector attacks and also suitable for future quantum classical networks. In MDI-QKD, Alice and Bob would send encoded photons to a middle station at which we do a ballast state measurement. This is already like an entanglement swapping operation. In terms of key rate, however, both these photons will survive the pass loss, which implies that the, to that the key rate would escape with the loss in the entire channel. In our scheme, the way that we want to improve that rate versus distance behavior is by adding quantum memory modules before the, con before the ballast state measurement. In that case, we only do the ballast state measurement once we make sure that the photons sent by Alice and Bob have both received and stored in the quantum memory. We would get the same improvement as in quantum repeaters, in which case the key rate would scale with loss only over half of the channel. One should however ask, uh, uh, what's the difference with quantum repeaters? In quantum repeaters, because of the imperfections in quantum memories, in particular the decoherence effect, we can't go to long distances. What would be different in our scheme? The main difference would be at the rate at which we can run our protocol as compared to the quantum repeater protocol. In a quantum repeater scenario, the rate at which we can distribute entanglement between adjacent nodes is restricted by the transmission delay between these two nodes. In our scheme, however, we can send photons one after another, and so long as we have a heralding scheme for the quantum memory, which in our paper we have shown how we can achieve that, there is no restriction on the transmission rate of these photons except the writing time into the memories. So in principle, if we have a fast memory, we can run our scheme faster than quantum repeaters, and that would imply that the coherence time that we need for our scheme is lower than what we need for this repeater scheme. So in our paper, we have done a thorough key rate analysis in which we consider all sorts of non-idealities which could exist in a realistic experimental setup. And then we have tested our result using some reported uh, experimental values. In particular, we have looked at this particular paper in which they report a very short reading writing time of 300 picoseconds. And we have obtained what key rate they could achieve with their current experimental setup. Unfortunately, it turns out that it is, it is still short of beating the no memory system that we have considered. However, we, if we improve some of their parameter values to to still achievable values within current technology that we have, we would reach to this curve B in which we, we outperform the no memory system between 200 and 400 kilometers. So the take home message is that there exists a window of opportunity that even with today's imperfect quantum memories, we may be able to beat no memory quantum systems. And that we believe is the first step toward building long distance quantum repeater systems. Thank you and bye.